Alright, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel and today we have got volatility incoming at 2 o'clock. These are all GMT by the way. At 2 o'clock UK time we've got the Fed's Harker speaking. Then Bullard's going to speak 15 minutes later. At half 2 we've got Bostic going to speak. And then Jay Powell will be taking the mic at 3 o'clock. So volatility is incoming and chop is certain. So I'm proceeding with caution and I think it would be wise for everyone to proceed with caution. Uh, my sort of thesis, as I've already said a couple of times, is the Fed's going to come out swinging as its last chance to be hawkish before it's going to be forced to pivot. I think we're going to get violent swings to the upside, followed by a downside. That's what I think. I think we're going to produce some sort of ball trap and then go down. Um, I think even if the Fed is completely dovish and says that we fold we give up, we're going to stimulate, we're going to print. I mean, they're not going to say that, of course, because they'll lose all credibility. But let's just say they did, hypothetically, then risk will rally. But I think based on where we are in the cycles, it will fall short pretty quickly because we do need to drop into some cycle lows across the board. So I do think no matter what happens, dovish or hawkish, the any rallies will be very short-lived until we can find our cycle lows. And then once we've found the cycle lows, I believe we stand a good chance at forming a true bottom and starting to attack the highs. I'll be diving in to see how the markets are likely to react coming off the back of the news. Ultimately, I'm not too interested in taking any positions until Monday because I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of chop and volatility. Experience has taught me that it's best to proceed with caution rather than just give your broker a bunch of stop losses. One thing I do know though is Bitcoin does not care. Bitcoin does not care at all. Bitcoin continues to grow, continues to scale. And here we have another example of someone buying a coffee in Gibraltar, this time with the Lightning Network. And you can see that this has actually become usable. So it's always been usable for larger payments, always been usable as a store of value. It's always been usable as a censorship resistant decentralized currency. But it's one of its main criticisms was that, oh, you can't buy a coffee with it because it takes 10 minutes to process a block and that's too long. Your coffee will be cold. Well, as you can see, Lightning Network has completely solved this problem. And it's paid. Done. I'm pretty sure that's even quicker than your standard credit or debit card, so that's pretty cool. The Bitcoin miner capitulation has finally come to an end on August 19th, having lasted a little longer than the 2018 miner capitulation. But as you can see here, we've had a hash ribbon cross. So this would imply that the lows are in for Bitcoin and we're not going to take out the prior low. I posted a couple of these on Twitter, so if anyone's not following me on Twitter who hasn't seen this, I just thought I'd include it for you. I said this is kind of how I expect the bottom formation to go and I've got a zoomed in version here. So I kind of expect some sort of failed pump, some sort of lower high to form, drop into the 60 day cycle low, then a left translated 60 day cycle, which will give us the actual four year cycle low around the first or second week of November. And then I think this whole structure here will become the bottom base and then we will emerge from that base and go. Whether the recovery is steeper than this, I don't know. but. I think that the bottom structure is most likely going to look like this and going to take this much time. So are there opportunities to get in lower from here? I think probably, but not a great deal lower. And I really don't see 14K. Now this low could form 12 to 14K, but I personally don't see it. I think that's asking too much of all the technicals. I will maybe do an update on this every month or two and see how close I got to reality. I could be wildly wrong. Maybe we drop down here. Maybe we go straight up here. I have no idea, but this is kind of what I expect to see. So I think it'll be interesting to see how close we get to that. I showed this the other day. The reset is really building steam now and it's become quite apparent to me that they are really, really pushing this and progressing. This is electricity price euros per megawatt hour. And as you can see, it's gone absolutely parabolic. And this is coming at a time when energy bill prices will be devastating. And this is the headline from the BBC News today in the UK. And they are warning that UK households are going to see an 80% increase in their energy bills up to three and a half K a year. That's what it looks like in a bar chart, which is pretty insane. And this is after Ofcom, a regulator has stepped in and capped that as the maximum you can pay. This works out the average family will be paying nearly 300 pound a month for their energy on a dual fuel system. But unfortunately, this is only gonna get worse over time. This is only gonna get worse because there's nothing anyone can do about the fact that they have to continue to print money. Inflation is gonna to continue to run away. And they're already well aware of this. You know, they're already talking about moving the goalposts, increasing their target inflation from two to 4% because they know they can't reach that target. They can't reach 4% realistically either, let's be honest. 
And this inflation has gotten so severe now that inflation is now more searched on Google than any other time since at least 2004 and likely, likely ever. There's likely never been a time in history where this many people are searching Google for the word inflation. It's gotten so out of control and so near to home for people that even people that are not involved in finance that don't have any understanding of finance whatsoever are now Googling inflation to try to figure out how they can get around this problem and what they can do about it. So if you know anybody that is struggling from inflation and wants to understand, send them this way or explain to them yourself how inflation works. Spread this, spread this information, spread this knowledge because we really are gonna need each other in times of severe inflation. And if you're watching this channel long enough or if you're in this sort of space in general, then you already know that inflation is not going anywhere and inflation is gonna be the real silent killer over this decade. Over in uh, Pakistan, I covered this yesterday, I think, and the day before. The cost of living and the inflation has gotten so out of control that people are rioting and protesting all over the world. The government in Pakistan has threatened to cut off banking with the use of a digital ID to anyone that protests against the regime. So this is what I mean by this reset is really starting to spiral now. You know, digital IDs, they are being rolled out. I believe the UK's is set to go live at the end of this year, and that will be run on Ripple's ledger judging at their most recent timelines. We know that we have the central bank digital currencies coming at the end of 2024. So things are starting to get pretty scary. And if you haven't got Bitcoin and you haven't got gold and you haven't got this sort of money outside the system as well as food, shelter and energy and community, then times are gonna get really, really difficult. So you're running out of time to prepare. So make sure you do that. The altcoin season index is a tool that looks at the relative performance of altcoins versus Bitcoin. So essentially what this chart is, is when the chart is going from here up, it's better to hold altcoins than Bitcoin. Altcoins outperform Bitcoin when this chart is going up and then the inverse is true. So when we get to the top and reverse, it's better to hold Bitcoin than it is to hold alts. This tells us that Bitcoin is gonna have relative outperformance to altcoins over the coming weeks and months. That can take shape in two different ways. That could mean that both of them run together but Bitcoin just does better. Or it can mean that they're both gonna fall but altcoins are gonna fall more than Bitcoin. Stock Money Lizards has shown the altcoin market cap is actually ready to form a base and go. And if you look here, this is what we did in 2018, made a little pump, came back, formed like a larger bottom structure, and then we went and we got a reversal cross as well. We've had that reversal cross and we are looking to be coming in to form a sort of wider base from which we can emerge. And if you really think about this, this is basically what I was calling for here. We're gonna form this bigger base structure and then go. So that remains to be seen. But I kind of, this, this idea makes a lot of sense to me that we'll do something like this. In terms of the reset as well, we've got this Qatar Central Bank boosting its gold reserves to a new record high. The Central Bank purchased 14.8 tonnes of gold last month and Qatar recently reported a 12-fold jump in its budget surplus. The trend continues. What trend you might be thinking? Well, Russia, remember, linked the ruble to gold at a rate of 5,000 rubles to one gram of gold. So Russia's got a gold-backed currency at the same time as Qatar is boosting its gold reserves, at the same time as China is ramping up gold imports and boosting its reserves. And at the same time, Zimbabwe is launching gold coins as legal tender to tackle hyperinflation. So remember, Zimbabwe is a few years ahead of the rest of the world, but ultimately this is how it goes. It's a mechanical process, right? Ultimately, what happens is the fiat currencies are inflated to near zero to completely worthless, and then they have to reset the currency against gold standard. And this is what we're seeing. We're seeing these countries start to move to back to a gold standard. Why would central banks be accumulating gold? Why would nations be stockpiling gold? Of course, the answer is they know inflation is gonna be severe. They know they're gonna eventually reset the currencies against gold. And so that's why I think it's important to have gold and silver as well as Bitcoin, especially with a longer term investment horizon. I'm gonna breeze through the charts, but I think ultimately by now, especially if you've been watching the channel, you know, that, you know what I'm gonna say. So I'm gonna breeze through these. We have got Fed speaking later. If the Fed is dovish, we're going to see yields come off. And if the Fed is hawkish, we're going to see yields run. The same is true of the dollar. If the Fed is dovish, the dollar is going to top and come down. But if the Fed comes out swinging and is hawkish, the dollar is going to run. Of course, this is going to be inversely correlated to risk assets. So the S&P, this looks like a decent swing, right? This doesn't look too bad, but I can't help but notice this. Just eyeballing this now. So do we come in, get a scam pump up here? and then get rejected and drop into the cycle low quite possibly but again it all comes down to the fed the fed is super hawkish expect this just to roll straight over and if the fed is super dovish and accommodating to markets then expect this to run a bit first 
Same is true of the Nasdaq and the Dow, of course. VIX still currently long volatility, looking for a bigger spike. Hopefully we can get further up here for, for the sake of my volatility. This is incredibly expensive for me to hold open this long. So i <laughs> um, like to see a pump sooner rather than later if I can get it. I do expect volatility to come in, although I realize I might have to wait another week or so. But obviously with the cycle low due around the 7th of September, 7th, 8th, 9th for the S&P, then I would expect to see the VIX pump into the 7th, 8th, 9th. How high up, I don't know, but I'm going to continue to push this trade as long as I can and hopefully profit from any volatility should it occur. UKX, we're out of this trade, kind of neutral. We're going to wait for some sort of setup and then I think maybe we can get a repeat of a downward trend line like that. So that's that. Not too interesting for now. Real, real. I like the way it's holding this, but I really want to make sure the Fed isn't going to crush markets. So maybe this is a position for Monday. Lining this up, I think it could look something like wherever it closes. I think we can have quite a reasonably tight stop here and target about 7.10 or something like that. So that would be reasonable for me. Um, alternatively, there's of course the entry above here, which would be fine too. But again, I'm going to wait till Monday for that. Oil coming in for that retest, I hope. We'll see. Again, it's all going to come down to the Fed. Not looking to take on any weekend risk, especially with a market like oil, which is highly, highly, highly volatile, highly, highly, highly manipulated. So I will wait until Monday, but possible entries on oil coming up. Gold, I would love to see it do what I think it's about to do, which is undercut this low slightly and then go. That becomes a super, super, super high confidence long from me if that were to occur. Exactly the same is true of silver and the same is true of the miners so if we can get an undercut mate this doesn't look like it wants to to be honest but these other two do so if we can get an undercut of the low i'll add there and add heavy bitcoin i think it's going to do the exact same thing as the stock market to be honest i think we can expect some sort of push up drop down into that cycle low and then we can go for a bit i think the exact same is true of ethereum i think what we'll see is perhaps a scam wick to convince people we've broken out of this little downward slope and resistance line and then I think perhaps we go lower and form a daily cycle low around the 10th or 11th of September alongside Bitcoin. I think that will become a long from me in both asset classes, Bitcoin and Ethereum. XRP, look at this, coming into this resistance. So are we going to think about breaking out? Are we going to line this up? Um, I will keep an eye on this. I'm not long yet but I'm looking to get long, as I keep saying, and I think there's going to be a massive trade if it can break out. It's a big if, of course, but don't say I didn't warn you in case it happens. So that's it from me for now. I will endeavor to come back and provide a summary based on the Fed. Uh, as I keep saying, but it is really important, everything comes down to the Fed and trade safe because volatility and scams are likely to prevail. So I'm going to wait until Monday because that's what experience has taught me to do. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy your weekend. Trade safe, everyone. Take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye.